Satyabama Institute of Science and Technology. Hi, this is Dr. Sylvia Grace J from the Department of Computer Science and Engineering. Today, I'm going to talk about operators in Java. In real world scenarios, operators are predominantly used in every form of statistics, in every form of work, in every form of day-to-day -day activities. So let me talk in detail from the basic of what is an operator, how the components of the operators belong to and different types of operators. What is an operator? What is operators all about? Here, operators are special symbols. They have two components. One will be an operand and the other will be an operator. Operands are values and operators are functions associated with them. Looking into a small a snippet or an example below, I have given some expression like 5 plus 1 is equal to 6, where my operands here are 5, 6, my operands here are 1 and 2, and my operator here is plus. In addition, considering my full expression, 5 plus 1 is equal to 6. So 5, 1, and 6 are operands, plus and equal to are operators. So looking into the types of operators, there are different types of operators. In particular with Java, there are eight different types of operators present. Let me discuss each of these in, in detail in the upcoming slides. Looking into the first operator, this is the arithmetic operator. Arithmetic operators involve addition, multiplication, division, modulo, and subtraction. Here I have given a small example of a program where I've illustrated how a typical Java arithmetic operator performs. Looking into this, so this is my class and my class name is Sylvia, public static void main, int a is equal to 10. I have already defined the value for my a. I have declared as well as I've defined my value for a. I've de declared and defined the value for b, which is 3. So system.out.println, I'm going to do the addition operation. So I've given in parenthesis a plus b. Similarly, for subtraction, it is a minus b. Multiplication, it is a into b. And for division, it is a bar b. And for modulo, it is a modulo b. Looking into the output that is generated, a plus b is 10 plus 3, that is 13. Subtraction is 10 minus 3, that is 7. Multiplication is 30. Division is 3. And the modulo is 1. One returns the upper, I mean, one returns the reminder, the other returns the quotient. Looking into the next unary operator. Unary operator here is used for decrement, increment, and negate. So looking in each thing in detail. One, that is my unary minus, that is a minus symbol. It is a single component. Here, I can use single component as well as two components. When I'm going to use a single minus, it is it is a uh, unary minus, which is a single component one. When I'm going to use compound ones, I will be using minus minus. So what are the possibilities? Unary minus is minus, unary plus or addition is plus. Then I have my increment operator plus plus and my decrement operator. Increment operator has two types, post increment where I will be using as a plus plus and for pre-increment plus plus a. Similarly, for decrement, post-decrement will be a minus minus and the pre-decrement will be minus minus a. Looking into the example here, my class name again is Sylvia, public static void main, int a is equal to 10, b is equal to 10. So now I'm going to do my post-increment. As I said earlier, a plus plus is post-increment. Then, then it is pre-increment that is plus plus a. Then my post decrement is b minus minus and my pre decrement is minus minus b. So now let's evolve in detail. So when I'm going to create a variable a, there will be a box associated. In memory, a box will be created and the name of the box will be a and the value inside that box will be 10. So when I'm going to use my post increment a plus plus, that means 10 value will directly get printed. That is why I got the value as 10. So, when 10 will be there in the box, after having 10, it will get incremented to by 1. So, uh, look into this second point. Second thing is pre-decrement, so plus plus a. So, already that box had 10. Now, the box I had used a, here I had used a plus plus. So, what will happen is 
10 plus 1, 10, 11 will be there in the box currently and I am using a pre-increment here. So, what will happen is another plus 1 will get added. So, 11 plus 1 will be 12. That is why my output is 12. So, similarly, for decrement 2, my current value, my current value is 10 and I am going to decrement it by 2 because the, uh, my value is 10. Here again, it is b minus minus. So, 10 minus 1 is 9. So, the, now the b value is 9 that is stored in my memory and 9 minus 1 for the second line will be 8. So, that is how my answers are 10, 12, 10 and 8. Going to my assignment operators. Assignment operators are also very familiar when you are going to do with scientific notations. So, when I am going to concentrate on si uh, assignment operators, assignment operators I am giving a variable a value. I am giving a variable a value. So, that is how assignment operators syntax would be. So, there are compound assignments too. That means what? A combination of assignment operator along with another operator. That is called as compound operators. So, looking here, uh, examples of my compound assignment operators would be plus a minus equal to star equal to slash equal to and modulo equal to. So, look, we I have com uh, composed a program to explain you in detail how these each compound operators and normal assignment operators perform. So, same thing, my class name is Sylvia, public static void main string args, then int f. I have predefined and declared the value for f as 7. System dot out dot println. What am I going to do? I am going to, I am just in double quotes, I am just printing the value of f plus is equal to 3. What will the answer be? Here I am performing the task. So, when it, when it comes to a, a scenario like this, initially f plus is equal to 3 will be 3, then f plus is equal to 3. Now, the value will be 7 plus 3 is 10. So, 3 is to 10. Secondly, f minus 2, that will be 2, 2 will get printed first, then 2 is 2, what, what will happen is uh, already 10 is there, 10 minus 2 will be 8, so 8 will get printed. f star, similarly 4 will be there, 4 will be present, 4, then 4 into equal to 4, that means 32 will be the answer. Similarly, for division modulo, modulo, I am going, uh, going to produce my reminder. So, my reminder is 0. So, that is why it is 2 is to 0. Then for ampersand, f ampersand is equal to, it will convert it into a hexadecimal value. For example, if the value of 11, if I take, I will convert it into hexadecimal value and that value will get assigned here. Similarly, for bar and then the exponent, then double greater than, double less than and less than or equal to will be 1 is to 6. So, already the value of f is stored in my memory in a box and the name of the box is f and the value was 7. So, after computing all these calculations, finally my value of my f will be 6 in the memory. Going into the fourth thing that is relational operators. Relational operators are something that shows that in relationship with uh, operator and operand in relationship with. So, talking into this in depth, it is going to return me a boolean value. Boolean value is either true or false, 0 or 1. So, now looking into this. Some of the relation operators will be double equal to. There is a difference between equal to and double equal to. Equal to is assigning the value. Double equal to is type checking or checking whether the values are same. So, double equal to, equal to returns a true or false. Okay. Similarly, not equal to is checking whether it is not equal to. Then greater than or equal to, less than, less than or equal to. Here again a snippet I have taken. The class name is Sylvia, public static void main string args. Here, I am declaring as well as defining the values of A, B and C. A has the value 10, B has the value 3 and C has the value 5. So, system dot out dot print ln, A is greater than or equal to B. So, I am going to just check whether A is greater or not. So, in the place of A, I put 10. 10 is greater than or e greater than B. I'm going, that is what I am going to check here. Yes, 10 value is greater than 3. So, it, is, it displays the answer as true. Secondly, less than a less than b. So, 10 is less than or less than 3? No. So, the value is going to be false. Similarly, less the similarly, I am going to check greater than or equal to. But I am going to check for greater than a is greater than or equal to 10 is greater than or equal to 3. True. Similarly, next one less than it is false. And when I am going to check e, double equal to, I am going to check whether a is double equal to c. That is 10 is double equal to 5, which is false. Then a is not equal to C, yes true, because 10 is not equal to 5. 
Next is logical operators. Logical operators are circuitry operators which are used for all integrated circuits and chipperies. So talking in detail, I'm going to use in logical or, logical and, logical not. So looking into that in detail, there are some conditions that I have to check. So and is logical and, it returns true. Again, these are booleans, they will return either true or false or zero or one. So logical or returns true if my condition is true and logical not returns a condition is false if my condition is true, it is vice versa. So looking into an example, a, a snippet that I had created, again my class name is Sylvia, public static void main string args. So look into the operators, I have predefined and declared the values for x and y. Boolean x is equal to true, Boolean y is equal to false. System.out.println x double ampersand y, I am going to check whether it is true or not. True, true is true, but here it is true and false, so it is false. So next is true or false, so I am going to check whether it is true or false. So x, y, this is a negation of that, so true, true is true, not y, not y is just the opposite, uh, y is true, not y is the opposite, it is false. Next is my ternary operators, ternary, from the word it means three. So here I am going to have a condition where I can check three possibilities or I can have three assignment conditions checked here. It can be a logical, it can be a relational or it can be even an arithmetic operation that I can check. But there will be three parts, that is why from the word it is ternary. So the format will be condition, if true, if false, then what will be the outcome? So look into this, before that the question mark is the key thing I am going to use here for differentiating all the three parts. So looking into the snippet here, my class name is operators, public static void main, here again I am declaring and defining the values of A, B and C, 20, 10 and 30 and the, uh, the result will be displayed in the vari variable result. So result is equal to this thing is equivalent to, this one line of code is equivalent to writing three lines of codes for checking the greatest among three numbers. When you are going to go for an interview, in interview's point of view, if you are going to write a snippet or a small piece of code, just one line to check the maximum of three numbers in one line, then that stands there for your technical round. So here I am checking whether A is greater than B or then A is greater than C. If A and if A is greater than B and if A is greater than C, then obviously A is greater. Similarly, I am checking with B is greater than A, B is greater than C, then B is greater, else obviously C will be greater. That is why the last column is like that. So the output will be the maximum of three numbers is 30. C is the biggest one. Moving into the bit shift operators, bit shift operators are gate based operators. For latches and technical circuitries, we use this bitwise operators to shift bits or to say, in other words, I will move left and I will perform some operation, I will move right and perform some operations. So talking about bit shift and, then the pipe symbol, exponent and tiddle, the last one is tiddle. So bit shift and operator will return, perform an and to an input value. Next or will perform an or, XOR will be byte by byte and XOR, not just like direct, there is a difference between OR and XOR, it will shift byte by byte or bit by bit, it will, it will convert it into a corresponding value and that value will be XORed again. So next is my complementary operator which is called as a tiddle and that will return one's complement for anything I am going to do. It will just return one's complement. If I am going to say, if my, if my bit value is 0, one's complement will be 1. So similarly, it will return my complementary values. Going into the last one, the shift operators. Shift operators are used for number shifting. But I am going to deal with binary conversions and code conversions. My compiler has to understand what piece of code I have typed. So where, where that variable is located, what address that variable is currently present and what value that a current variable is holding. So all these will be in a language which a compiler can understand. So all will be in terms of binary codes or in hexadecimal values. So I am going to shift them the zeros to attain a space where I had, where I can store a new variable. So looking into this, the general format will be uh, a shift operator, number of places it has, it has to shift. So the le left shift operators are there, right, I mean right shift operators are there. The right shift can be called as signed, right signed operators and the double 
greater than symbols are called as unsigned right shift operators. That means I will shift a bit and I will pad with zeros to the right. So looking into the small example there, another snippet, my class name is Sylvia, public static void main. Here I've declared and defined the value for A. Now system.out.println A double shift, I mean, I mean that I'm using my left shift operator. This is the, whatever is in double quotes, I have, I'm just going to print. The, after the plus what I'm going to have is what I'm going to function, the perf performance I'm going to do. So the value is 10, A has the value 10. So when I'm going to perform double, double shift to it, what happens is the value doubles, it becomes 20, 10 plus another 10, it will become 20. Similarly, when I'm going to shift less by 1, my value will be 5. The A's value was 20, okay. Shifting back is 10 plus 5, that I have to minus uh, 10 plus 5 is 15. So from 20, I have to minus uh, 15 and my value will be 5. Thank you. Uh, thank you for the time. Let's catch back again with some another interesting topic. See you then. Bye.